Alright guys, so we have an amazingly detailed Herbler Habitat Guide. I just hope I can add all the correct annotations before the video publishes. Hey there, and welcome to my Herbler Habitat Guide. In this guide, I cover everything you need to know about Herbler Habitat, so you too can get that neat looking witch doctor suit. Or maybe you want to be able to use the Juju Farming Potion for more herbs. Well, let's get on with it. This is the menu for this guide. Click on a section to go to that part of the video, or click on the play button to start the guide. You can return to the menu at any time by clicking on the menu button in the upper left corner. So, what exactly is this Herblore Habitat thing? It's a mini game where you combine hunter, farming and Herblore. You make combinations of plants which all attract different kinds of Jadinkos. But Stefan, what are Jadinkos? Well, Jadinkos inhabit the Herblore Habitat. They are small dinosaur-like creatures, which you must catch in order to get seeds for the right combinations of plants. Oh. Going too fast? Don't worry, I'll explain that in further detail in a bit. The minimum requirements for using this area are 54 farming and 70 hunter. That's all you need to catch the lowest Jadinko. To be able to do everything, you need to have 80 farming, 81 hunter, 75 herblore and 55 agility. 80 farming is required to make all the war potions. To just catch all the Jadinkos, 77 is enough. The same with herblore, 54 is enough. It's advised to have 80 construction, because otherwise you have to pay a lot of money to hunt all the Jadinkos. You don't need to bring a lot of items, just some cash, 10k is more than enough, and a hatchet, any kind will do. When you plan on hunting all Jadinkos, bring an apple, orange and banana tree sapling. Herblore habitat is located in the southeast of Koranja, directly east of the Kasari jungle. You can get there by going to Taverly, to a woman called Betamax, who will sell you a Juju teleport bag. Use this bag and you will find yourself in the Herblore habitat. There are four sections or camps. The North Camp, the Middle Camp, the South Camp, and the East Camp. Okay, so you've arrived. But you don't want to go fire making, right? So, right next to you there's a guy called Papa Mambo. Talk to him and after some conversation he will give you some seeds. After that, trade with him. Buy 5 Marasamal traps, a noose wand, a rake, a spade, a seed nibber and the blossom seeds. Now you can begin hunting Jadinkos. Go to the middle camp where you will see a couple of farming patches. There is a fruit tree patch, a bush patch, a flower patch and a herb patch. One patch is not for farming, but for construction, the environmental feature patch. Here you can build all kinds of things, which is needed to attract some of the Jadinkos. There are also a tool leprechaun, who will store normal farming equipment, but also juju potions, which are rewards from this activity, a zombie farmer, who will look after your patches, and a sleigh rigs, a man who will give you information about Jadinkos. But he's not important, because you have me, right? <coughs> Break the flower patch and plant any color blossom. This requires 54 farming. When you go back to the north camp, you will see common Jadinkos popping out of the ground. They are attracted by the scent of the blossom. 
Lay your Amaro Samal traps on the ground and wait until the Jidinkos get caught. This requires 70 Hunter. Do this for a while and you will notice that you'll get seeds. These seeds are needed to catch other types of Jidinkos. You also get Herblow seeds, which you can farm and eventually turn into Juju potions. You should continue hunting until you have one lurch berry seed and one cover berry seed. This can take quite some time if you are unlucky. When you have the seeds, you can begin hunting all Jadinkos in a row for a reward. To get the reward, you only need to catch one of each type of normal Jadinko. Normal Jadinkos? Are there other Jadinkos too then? Oh well, there are also God Jadinkos, but I will not be talking about that now. You have to be patient. I will now give you all the requirements for all the normal Jadinkos. Okay, so you've seen the common Jadinko. It requires 70 Hunter and any color of flower. It's caught with the Mara Sama trap in the north camp. It gives 350 hunter XP when caught and drops a withered vine. The withered vine can be used on traps to help catching the Jadinkos. The shadow Jadinko requires 71 hunter, a red flower and an abandoned house in the environmental feature patch. Caught using tracking in the south camp. A noose wand is needed for this. Make sure to equip before you go hunting these. It gives 475 hunter XP and drops a shadow vine. The Igneous Jadinko requires 74 hunter, a blue flower, a thermal vent, a lurch berry bush and an orange tree. The lurch berry bush requires 61 farming to plant. Caught with a Mars and Mall trap in the south camp, gives 465 hunter XP and drops a marble vine. The Cannibal Jadinko requires 75 hunter, a green flower, tall grass and a calverberry bush. A calverberry bush requires 77 farming to plant. This is the first Jadinko in the list that requires a Juju Hunter potion to be caught. You use the potion on the flower patch. I will explain how to get this potion later in the guide. Caught with a Mars and Mall trap in the south camp. Gives 475 XP and drops plant teeth. The Aquatic Jadinko requires 76 Hunter, a red flower, a pond, a calverberry bush and an apple tree. Requires the Juju Hunter potion. Caught with a Mars and Mall trap in the south camp. Gives 475 hunter XP and drops an aquatic vine. The amphibious Jadinko requires 77 hunter, a blue flower, a pond and a lurch berry bush. Caught with a Mars and Mall trap in the north camp. Gives 485 hunter XP and drops an oily vine. The carrion Jadinko requires 78 hunter, a green flower, a boneyard and a calverberry bush. Caught with a Mars and Mall trap in the south camp. Gives 505 hunter XP and drops a pungent vine. These vines can be used to make super compost. The diseased Jadinko. Requires 78 hunter, a boneyard and a banana tree. Caught using tracking in the south camp. Gives 580.5 hunter XP and drops a corrupt vine. The camouflage Jadinko. Requires 79 hunter, standing stones and a lurch berry bush. Requires the Juju Hunter Potion. Caught using tracking in the south camp. Gives 600 Hunter XP and drops a striped vine. The Draconic Jadinko. Requires 80 Hunter, a red flower, a dark pit and a lurch berry bush. Requires the Juju Hunter Potion. Caught with a Mars and trap in the north camp. Gives 525 Hunter XP and drops a Draconic vine. To build things in the environmental feature patch, you need certain construction levels. The boneyard requires 56 construction. The abandoned house requires 57 construction. The thermal vent requires 59 construction. The tall grass requires 62 construction. The pond requires 65 construction. The standing stones require 70 construction. The dark pit requires 80 construction. If you don't have the required level, you can pay Papa Mambo to build it for you. The amount of cash you have to pay is equivalent to the level required times 1000. So if you need level 80, you have to pay 80k GP. So, 
If you want to hunt your dinkos weekly, I advise you to get AD construction first. When you hear all this about hunting jadinkos, needing this bush, and needing this flower, you might think, hmm, I'm gonna need a lot of seeds for that. Nope. All you need to do is hunt them in a specific order, and you'll only need one of each seed. There are two options, the calvaberry option and the lurchberry option. When you already have a calvaberry in your patch, you choose the calvaberry option, and vice versa. I will also put these lists in the description. About tracking. For the people who think this is a lot of work, it doesn't have to be, because in Herblor Habitat it always follows the same pattern. Besides the normal Jadinkos, there are also three god Jadinkos, Samarok, Ceradomin and Guthix. The combinations for these are not known, so you have to find out what they are, because every week the combinations change. There are a couple of facts which you can use to find it out. Fact 1. The type of tree and the type of bush is almost always the same for all three god Jadinkos for that week. Fact 2. Every god Jadinko has its own color of flower. So if for example Zamorak requires a red flower, the other ones can't require a red flower. Fact 3. An empty patch, except for the flower, counts as a possibility too. With that in mind, we can begin. First, use a Juju Hunter potion on the flower patch, if you haven't done so already. By doing this you make sure to get a message about meeting some of the requirements for one of the God Jadinkos. We know that the color of blossom doesn't matter so just make sure there is one in the patch. If you are lucky, you immediately get a message about meeting two or maybe even three requirements, but let's assume you don't get that. Then just go through the environmental feature list. You should get a message about meeting two requirements. After this, plant a fruit tree. If you don't get a message, plant another fruit tree. If this doesn't do anything, plant the last one. If this also doesn't work, it means the patch has to be empty. Eventually you should get a message about meeting three requirements. Then do the same for the bush patch. Now you should be able to hunt one of the god Jadinkos. Go to the south camp and then east. Climb on the vine. This requires 55 agility and you will find yourself in the east camp. Catch a god Jadinko and return to the middle camp. The god Jadinkos drop finds too. The Zamorak fine, the Ceredomin fine and the Guthix fine. Replace the blossom with another color. Assuming the bush and the tree are the same for all god Jadinkos, you only have to go through the environmental feature list again and you will be able to hunt another god Jadinko. Repeat this for the last Jadinko and you're done. Like I said earlier in this video, you also get Herblor seeds from the Jadinkos. These seeds can be farmed in the middle camp, but also in the east camp. The only difference is that the zombie farmer will not protect the herbs in the east camp. There are different kinds of seeds for different kinds of potions. I will list them all for you right here. We begin with the lowest level potion, the Juju Hunter potion. The herb needed for this potion is the Urzil. Requires 58 farming to plant, 3 green flowers for the zombie farmer to protect it, and gives 87 farming speed for both planting and harvesting it. The second ingredient is a corrupt vine. 
requires 54 Herbert to make and gives 123 XP. You cannot drink this potion. You can use it on the flower patch in the middle camp to attract some of the Jadinkos. The effect lasts 10 minutes. The scentless potion. The herb needed is the Argway. Requires 65 farming, 4 red flowers to protect and gives 110 farming XP for planting and 125 XP for harvesting. The second ingredient is the shadow vine. Requires 59 herbert to make and gives 135 XP. When you drink this potion, all the traps you lay while hunting are considered to be smoked, so this will speed up your training a bit. The effect lasts 5 minutes. The Juju Farming Potion. The herb needed is the Uguna. Requires 70 farming, 3 blue flowers to protect, and gives 135 farming XP for planting and 152 XP for harvesting. The second ingredient is the Marble Vine. Requires 64 herb lore to make and gives 146 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 33% chance of picking two herbs at once at any herb patch, including the ones in herb lore habitat. The effect lasts for 5 minutes. The Juju Cooking Potion. The herb needed is the Shango. Requires 76 farming, 5 lurch berries to protect, and gives 140.5 farming XP for planting and 160 XP for harvesting. The second ingredient is plant tea. Requires 67 herb to make and gives 152 XP. You cannot drink this potion. You can use it on a baked potato to make a strange potato. Then you can use a tuna and a sweet corn on it to make a juju gumbo. Juju gumbo is a type of food which heals 220 life points plus an additional 10 life points a second for 10 seconds. So that's 320 life points in total. The Juju Fishing Potion. The herb needed is the Shango. The second ingredient is the Aquatic Vine. Requires 70 herb to make and gives 158 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 33% chance of catching a barren shark while shark fishing. A barren shark heals 200 life points when eaten, plus an additional 10 life points a second for 10 seconds. So that's 300 life points in total. The effect lasts 5 minutes. The Juju Wood Cutting Potion. The herb needed is the Samadan. Requires 80 farming, 5 Calvary berries to protect, and gives 170 farming XP for planting and 190 XP for harvesting. The second ingredient is the Oily Vine. Requires 71 herb to make and gives 160 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 10% chance of finding a wood spirit while woodcutting. The wood spirit will bank all of your logs for the next 30 seconds. You can get more than one spirit in the 5 minutes the effect lasts. The Juju Mining Potion. The herb needed is the Samadan. The second ingredient is the Draconic Vine. Requires 74 herb to make and gives 168 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 10% chance of finding a stone spirit while mining. The stone spirit will bank all of your ores for the next 30 seconds. You can get more than one spirit in the 5 minutes the effect lasts. Zamorak's Favor The herb needed is the Samadan. The second ingredient is the Zamorak Vine. Requires 75 herb to make and gives 170 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 10% XP bonus to Hunter while hunting in the herb lore habitat. Saradomin's Blessing The herb needed is the Samadan. The second ingredient is the Saradomin Vine. Requires 75 herb to make and gives 170 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 10% XP bonus to farming while farming in the herb lore habitat. Guthix's Gift. The herb needed is the Samadan. The second ingredient is the Guthix Vine. Requires 75 herb to make and gives 170 XP. When you drink this potion, you get a 10% XP bonus to herb lore while making juju potions. Ah, now we're getting to the good part, the rewards. So there are a couple of things you can get for doing this minigame. You can get a reward once a week. The week resets at the same time as penguins, in the night of Tuesday on Wednesday. First off, the XP rewards. If you catch one of each of the normal Jadinkos, you can get an amount of XP from Papa Mambo, from the skills you use here. Hunter, Farming and Herblore. The formula for the XP you receive is... So that would mean if you have, for example, 80 farming, you would receive 12,680 XP. If you catch one of each god Jadinko, but only after you've got the normal Jadinkos too, 
you can get an amount of XP for the same skills with half the amount of the normal Jidinkos. So for catching God Jidinkos, you would for example receive 6340 XP in farming. Then there's another reward, the Witch Doctor suit. It consists of the Witch Doctor mask, the Witch Doctor robes and the Witch Doctor legs. When you cut one of all normal Jidinkos, you receive the robes or the legs from Papa Mambo, regardless of which piece you already obtained. I experienced that the ropes are far more common than the legs, so you might have to come back for quite some weeks if you want the full set. You receive the mask after you've got one of all God Jidinkos. You can't receive more than one mask, but you can use the drop trick for this. Before speaking to Papa Mamba for the reward, drop the mask you already have and talk to him. After this, just pick up the mask from the ground. When you get the mask, Papa Mamba also grants you an experience bonus to all training related to herbal habitat of half an hour. How much you get depends on which pieces of the witch doctor suit you're wearing. The mask and the robes both give a 2% XP bonus each and the legs give a 1% bonus. So that's the end of this video. I hope I've taught you some things and that you're able to do herbal habitat now. I really enjoyed making this guide and I hope you enjoyed watching it. You're damn right we enjoyed watching that, that guide was freaking epic. Alright guys, so feel free to click any of the annotation links on your screen right now to go to either his channel or my channel or click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of the newest and best guides that come out. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up and or a favorite, it always helps and is greatly appreciated. Not to mention the fact that this guide was awesome. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.